about the plantings. As far as scale goes, the width of this pathway is four foot, which is minimum standard for accessibility. And the width of the planting areas on either side varies from uh, you know, eight feet to you know, more than you know, 15 or so. So as you're walking, you would have plantings on either side of you was the intention. I'm not understanding. It varies from 8 feet to 15 feet? Um, the, the, the space of plantings on either side of the path. So on this side of the path, yeah. the plantings are approximately 8 feet wide. Okay, deep. so that's the back. Or that's the back, the yeah. Sure. And then uh, here on between the pathway and the Wilmot Avenue sidewalk, that is probably 15 plus. Feet. So that would, that would come out all the way from the garden. Correct. So it, this would this would all be then closer to Wilmette Avenue, yes? Uh, so this is the Wilmette Avenue curb. This is the Wilmette Avenue sidewalk. Right. And the way that the that the plantings are positioned here is that we have a planting bed that's shown between the Wilmette Avenue sidewalk and the building face mm -hmm. with a slight lawn panel mm -hmm. to separate it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is just an ex extension on the other side of the walkway or by, before the exit door. So there are two exit doors here. There's right. one here and right. there's an exit door here. Um, the, the bluestone paving hugs either side of the access path to the exit door. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. No, you bet. Um, there was a question about why annuals and why not natives in the in the planter. Certainly it can be whatever whatever the library wants. I think the reason that annuals were indicated on the early plan was because annuals are being maintained in some of the other raised planters and so it was an idea of the committee to put annuals in there but it can certainly sustain uh, natives without a doubt um, so this was the committee direction um, but you know as I mentioned it's 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 something that we are still working on uh, the question about why specify non-natives so uh, it's true when we when we did some of this earlier work we had uh, looked at areas to be full native per the committee's direction, full native in this area, and then native derived plantings for the balance. Since that time, um, as I know many of you know, that has been modified. We've continued to work with the committee to, you know, to minimize the amount of non-natives and maximize the amount of natives. So what we've been working on is shown here in this this is a, you know, a, a sort of a graphic plant list. Um, natives, for the most part, I will mention that there are just a very small handful of places that um, we are recommending, or the committee has been working with us to collectively recommend um, non-natives in just a couple of spots, and I'll describe them. One is um, a variety of elm called the Morton Glossy Elm, and the intention of that is to have a tree that can sustain salt and urban uh, tolerance, the de-icing mm -hmm. salts that get hit at the parking lot up on the north end of the parking lot. So we want to make sure that the landscape materials that we install in here are durable and can handle the de-icing salts. So oh, I'm sorry, where, where would the tree go? By the parking lot? No. I only got one easel, so I <laughs> got to work out. I got to do it. So, so sure. So here in this landscape strip, okay, that's the trees on the north will go side, along right? here on the north side. Right. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, and so it's it's to it's to make sure that you know when this parking lot gets salted, the plantings that are in here can tolerate the salts. Yeah. Does that? Well, no, there's some plants. Rick, can I just ask you a question? Does that? Do we salt that parking lot, the permeable paver parking lot? We salt both, both parking lots do get salt. Okay. And of course, one, the village parking lot, we don't control what they, how they maintain their lot. Oops. Oops. All right. Then the the other the other items that are. Um, just to continue, that are not native, um, are really just uh, a couple of things. One is Grolo Sumax. The committee wanted to make sure that we have low ground cover that can also tolerate the de-icing salts at the north end of the lot and wherever it's exposed to the roadway. So that's the Grolo Sumac. And then beyond that, there was just a couple of spots where the committee wanted to have evergreen color um, located in a section beneath the, the facade here and also in a section in front of the sign. 
So again, that was the committee's direction was, you know, trying to balance this desire for natives with a public space that has a balance of evergreen color and is durable with the urban salts that get thrown at it. So that is kind of where we arrived at the plant list that you see. <clears throat> is, it is it possible to ask a question? Let's let Jody finish her presentation. I'm so close. Thank you. Um, <laughs> as far as the bus stop and the sidewalk clear zone, so uh, correct. Yeah. Today, with the curved walkway in here today, it does make up some of the difference because the way that the bus stop was placed, not by the library, not by the village, by Pace, um, the space between the back of the bus stop and the edge of the public sidewalk is three foot four inches. So it's a little bit more than three. Um, it doesn't meet the four foot standard that uh, is best practices for accessibility outside. So I think that was a great point and that's something that we want to continue to work, um, work on that. The, the village has reviewed the plans. They haven't had any comments so far but that's something that I think we should continue to work on. Um, no, I'm sorry, but to work on to what effect? You mean to enlarge to, the sidewalk Well, to possibly? first, to understand, uh, I've circled back with the village to, mm -hmm. right. to just double check that um, we don't have any accessibility concerns, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm still waiting to find okay. out. But I think that that's something that we need to look at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, and then the other, there's two last items that were raised that um, that I would have to default to the library on. One is the donor materials and the donor plaques mm -hmm. that are out there today. So as part of our work, Tuska did document all of the donor plaques that are out there today. There are a whole variety of them. Some of them are attached to benches that are no longer um, in good condition. Some of them are attached to buildings. Some of them are attached to stone. So some of them are very easy to move. Some of them not so much. Um, and I know that the library has been working to um, to contact families, and I would default to the library for those things. But mm -hmm. all I can say is that it's the intention of the committee and, and of ourselves to make sure we protect those things and very carefully preserve them and make sure that they are respectfully placed in the proper location. We just have to still get more feedback from the families to understand what that means. Um, and then the last item was about um, the library policy with regard to uh, native plantings. And, and again, I would have to default to the library with regard to policy type things. But um, as I mentioned, this you know this is a process. You know, we're at 90% right now working with the committee. It's been a very collaborative, very um, very good process so far. Uh, and you know we are here as designers to assist with um, design and technical assistance, but ultimately we are um, we're here to support the library and the committee. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that there's a space for questions, but I'm gonna stick around. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm sorry. There's a there's one more thing I, I didn't mention. So I'll just leave this up. But these are the products and materials that um, are proposed for the for the landscape. So really quickly, the monument sign at the corner. Um, very simply stated the library's name, um, the entry sign that's near the parking lot, um, and then this is those seating pebbles that I mentioned, uh, weighted bollards, and then you can see the other materials, benches and bike, bike racks and such. Now I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye. Jody, thank you. Please stay. <laughs> I will stay. Um, the next item on our agenda, and, and you know, Jody's presentation will sort of the backbone for what some of the upcoming conversation I intend, I expect will be. But the next item on the agenda is public comment. And so if there's any members of the public uh, who would like to speak, um, our sta um, please uh, have a seat. Please, take, and I, if there may be more than one. Uh, Edie, I know you're intending to speak. Um, <laughs> And thank you. Um, we have a three-minute, you know, uh, limit for speaking. And but um, with that, you know. Be brief, and we'll be glad to elaborate yes. Thank you. Questions. And if you could identify yourself sure. and so on and so forth. Hello, my name is Edie Rowell. I'm one of the co-presidents of the Little Garden Club of Wilmette. We also have some of our other members here today: Charlotte Edelman and uh, Piper Rothschild. 
and uh, want to say in advance, we... And, oh, hi, Tom, co-president, <laughs> as well as Joanne Deneen, our secretary. So we're here in force because I think everyone understands we have a great deal of passion surrounding this, and we have been very appreciative of Tesca's response to of some of the issues that we raised in November about uh, more natives, and they have been increasing the percentage of native plants in terms of their plan, and we're looking forward to continuing to work with them on finding, uh, if you grant us the opportunity, to uh, find uh, increasing e even additional ones, including how the planters might be used and things of that nature. Um, our club formally adopted a statement on this, so if you'll bear with me. Um, it's the Little Garden Club of Wilmette respectfully requests that the Wilmette Public Library hit the pause button and consider dividing the 2018 out outdoor renovation project into two projects or tracks that they can be going on on a concurrent basis. Uh, one would be the hardscape, which is, I know, a critical issue, to address safety issues of the deteriorating sidewalks and parking area. And number two would be green space to develop landscape principles that result in truly durable and sustainable green areas that restore an ecosystem that will naturally sequester carbon, reduce stormwater runoff, and increase biodiversity through the installation of native northeastern Illinois plants. Further, the Little Garden Club of Wilmette offers its assistance to the Wilmette Public Library's Executive Director, Board of Trustees and staff, and their designated landscape contractor in selecting appropriate plants, both woody, trees and shrubs, and herbaceous, the flowers and grasses, for this project. We respectfully um, look forward to having an opportunity to work with you. I have copies of the statements if you would like. Yes, please. Okay. You can start passing these down. Thank you. Along with our little promotional piece on Pocket Prairies. And if there are any people here who would also like, we've brought along additional brochures. Thank you. Do you have any um, questions? I, I want to say one thing, uh, and thank you for coming. The way our agenda, and you sort of see how this, in, in a sense, it's sort of chopped up, but we will quickly have the treasurer's report, which typically goes fairly quickly, mm -hmm. uh, bills and salaries. And then, um, the board will return to discussion of this project after those items. So thank you. So if you want to stay, oh, I will. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who intends to speak? Would like to speak? Okay. Uh, I'd like to say something. Share it. Yeah. yeah. But I must admit I don't understand the procedure here. Is I don't understand. Is there a comment time? Are we going to discuss this plan and ask questions? Um, this is a formal board meeting, so it's not a general community discussion. I think we need to have that, but this is probably, and I think that might be one of the outcomes of the board discussion here. You know, this is a board meeting where we have to approve bills and salaries and, and take other actions. Um, but I, I think this is not necessarily the time for that kind of give and take, but that give and take does need to take place. So when, um, when and I do appreciate, started. and I think all of us do, the, the communication that we've had from your group, as Jody has indicated, there's some things that have been, you have, you know, nicely pointed out, and I think that we can, you know, and the process is better for it, let's put it that way. Thank you. So, I'm here really as an individual. I am, I'm here. Um, could as you an, please introduce I'm yourself? here as an individual. My name. Yeah, this isn't working. It, 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 it doesn't. It, well, it doesn't Dan, is yours working? Room, it broadcasts to the video. Hello? So, so there's no internal <laughs> projection, but the, the go. Okay, well, so. I'll talk as loudly as I yeah. can. Uh, my name is Charlotte Edelman, and uh, I'm here as a member of the Little Garden Club of Wilmette, but I'm also here as an individual. I have been communicating with you as an individual since February of 2018. And uh, I, I did have some questions. I wanted to know who is on the committee that was being referenced here. I, I think it's hard to understand a uh, report when you don't know who's being talked about. So is there an answer to that question? Um, I can answer that question. The um, 
uh, uh, two, mem two board members, Jenny and Jan, mm -hmm. um, two staff members, uh, and, the, um, and the director at the time, Heather, then um, then Betty took, uh, Betty Georgie, head of adult services and one of our co -direct, uh, interim co-directors, saw it through, although during the summer, because we were busy hiring a director, we didn't really move the plan forward during the summer. Where there, so if we hit pause, we've done that before on this plan too. You know, we, we've, we've had to react to a variety of different circumstances. So that was, so it was a com combination staff, director, and then interim director and board committee. Well, two, three staff actually. Three, who, two and staff and Rick. Two? No, it was Rick. It was Rick. Rick and Nancy. Oh, okay. Nancy and Rick. Yeah. You want my last second share? Okay. Yeah. Right. And different people attended. We've always had, you know, had a bold culture that, if, you know, occasionally I would attend. I would attend meetings. I think Ron has attended. Um, there have been other people who have attended from time to time. So does that answer your question? Well, yeah. I was curious who the board members were who were on the committee.